one thing about uh, Puff, he's not a morning guy at all. Nothing res nothing like a morning guy. He would come to the office somewhere around 11, 11.30, already exhausted. Um, and uh, would literally jump into it, jump on the phone and uh, start making things happen, trying to figure out the next direction. I remember uh, little Sean coming to the office and uh, Puffy was a big little Sean fan in terms of a writer. For those who don't know, uh, Little Sean wrote a large majority of the first Father MC album, so they had a wonderful relationship with who sounds good on what. I think what a lot of people have missed from being an A&R is how to place people and uh, place things and place them around an environment that creates that thing. Just two great things don't automatically mean they belong together. Pancakes and lasagna don't belong in the same plate. You can't just, you know, they both deliver. <laughs> they're both delicious, but they don't belong in the same plate. So I think I think Puffy was very good at placing the right people, doing the right thing, and having a vision for R&B that we weren't ready for. I mean, at least we as we as young hip hoppers, we were, but the rest of America, I think it was it was a shock to see R&B people posed as rappers with that vibrato and and not trying to be smooth all the time it was a little rougher you know when Jodeci the first album cover they had on uh, 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 field jackets they had black field jackets on I, nothing about that said R&B I know for a fact they probably lost some sales at the beginning because it wasn't even in the R&B section had it I mean it was probably in the rap section but he he had a vision and he was timely he was uh, he was timely and ahead of the curve uh, a lot of you won't, won't admit this but you guys turned your back on hip-hop and went to house music I remember when house music was real huge and a lot of the hip hoppers kind of swayed over to house music. And that was when Doc Martens were huge. And I remember him throwing his away when they were still, you know, people are still doing the Doc Martin thing. He's like, that's over though. And he had a wonderful vision. He's the first dude and everybody wanted to cut their hair off. He, 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 he cut his hair off. He, made, he did it and it shocked Jodeci so much they did it. I remember Jodeci comes to the office and Andre Hillel is livid. He's like, you guys don't even look like your record cover anymore. All of them were bald, except for JoJo. Bald heads. And he's like, how am I going to take you to a radio station? You don't look like your record anymore. You look nothing like it. But uh, he, he's, he's, been a, he's, been a for, he's been in the forefront of uh, music and pushing music, uh, pushing the music agenda, and then learning from others and forging himself in the flame. Sean John, baptism by fire. Uh, Revolt TV, Baptism by Fire, Bad Boy, maybe not as hot a flame because he had so much time at Uptown or learned so much at Uptown, it's not by fire, but still an amazing thing. And people forget what a great A&R he was. That, you know, Craig Mack on top of Flavor in Your Ear is not an accident. Get, get, go, go ahead. Um, and he, he, he got it, he got it. He, know, he knew where to put people in their right place and, and a great motivator and funny. I think people don't get to see how funny it was. One time we were at this club and he was dancing with a girl that wasn't his girlfriend and he told me if his girlfriend caught him, I'd get fired. And we, right there, he's like, if I get caught, you're fired. And we both just bust out laughing at this club. I don't even remember the club. But I remember the, the girl he was with was bad too. Good taste, bro. <laughs> you give, got good taste. Give, give me a classic puff, puffy and an artist uh, interaction. That, that sticks out. Hmm. I didn't see that much artist interaction with him. I saw him with a lot of producer interaction. Dave Hall uh, helped, helping sculpt, him and Eddie F sculpting the first Mary J. Blige album. I saw that interaction. And what, what I saw was he wanted to make it... The question was, where were we going to go after New Jack Swing? We were all huge Teddy Riley fans. Who wasn't? But where were we going to go after that? You know, New Jack Swing was literally a tablespoon of hip hop inside R&B. Puff was going to do hip hop with three tablespoons of R&B, which is different. You know, R&B with oh, I said it wrong. What is it? Uh, a guy and all those groups were more R&B with a tablespoon of hip hop. And he said, no, let's do let's do hip hop with a tablespoon of R&B. Hence, Mary J. Blige and the Totals and the Face and all that type of stuff. It was just amazing. And he put it at the right time with the right people. Right time, right people. You can't get mad at that. Visionary. Absolutely visionary. Wh whose idea was it to put uh, Pooba on the Mary J. Blige song? Absolutely had to be his. All that was his. All, the Mary J. Blige album is his vision. 
That's his vision. And Pooh Bob was um, it's huge at that time. That's it. He's at his peak. He's at his peak. Um, he's at his peak. And why not? It fit. It fit. He belonged on. He belonged there. At that time, he was the biggest guy in hip hop. And he was going to, he was going to usher in the queen of hip hop soul, but whoever's the hottest person in hip hop. He was a big Keith Murray fan too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He he heard it. He heard Keith Murray. He knew. He knew he had something. He never tried to sign Keith Murray. I don't know. I think Eric Sherman already had that. But when he heard Keith Murray, he knew he was special. He knew that wasn't just another rapper in the lane running with us. He knew like, yo, this guy, he's gonna do a donut and come right back past us again. And Keith Murray was a huge splash in the palm. Huge splash in the palm. Another thing we got to give uh, Puffy respect for was uh, he literally carried that bad boy thing on his back. I didn't like the bad boy name. I remember when he said it, he's gonna name his label bad boy. I, I, I didn't think it translated it all the way. It sounded like a rap label. Could he make it, could he take it huge corporately? You know what I'm saying? It, it, it sounded too hip hop, but it was perfect. It was perfect. It, it symbolized who he was. You know, Puffy's not Puffy's not an, 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 an angel in no sense of the word, but he's but he's but he's no hellion either. He know he he knows that he knows that on Sunday I can't steal anything out of the cookie jar, but Monday morning I'm gonna steal a little something. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna leave some, but I'm gonna steal a little something. That, that's that, that's genius. That's genius.